on the left side is a king's bearing we ordered and on the right side is a phi bearing we ordered now again. And look at the oil hole. Oh, the king's bearing is much bigger. I'm glad we got new bearings. Now you're not going to say now bigger is not always better. <laughs> bigger is not always better. Oh my God. Oh, don't do that. That really looks like a dumb idea. You know, to me, that definitely looks like another dumb idea. <laughs> That's where we usually pour our concrete in. No, we don't. No. <laughs> this is the first crankshaft we're really installing. Hi, I'm Christian. And I'm Vera. And in this episode, we show you that it's not so easy to install a crankshaft in an engine block of a Discovery 3 TDV6 engine without screwing anything up. That's what I wanted to say. I hope you enjoy the video. Hope you're not wasting your time. I wonder which one is a new one. This is the old one, okay, which we can't use. We yeah. evaluated this. The reason we can't use it is it can't be ground because it got too much run out on the mains. It has a quarter of a millimeter run out. If we want to take that run out out, we're still going to have a distorted crankshaft. And Fabian bought a new one here, which is a used crankshaft uh, yeah. out of a Discovery 3 2007 with 140,000 kilometers as far as you can trust um, anybody on the internet, you know, because they're only honest people um, selling stuff on the internet. So 140,000 is nothing, really. Really? You have 80,000 and worried about a crankshaft failure. Got a nick here on the main shaft. Can you see it right there? Yeah, yeah. And it's close to the seal. And the person who sold it to Fabian uh, did not see any need in mentioning this to him. It's just because there's so many honest people on the internet selling there. We're gonna have to polish this out and I don't want to drop it. This would not be good on video. And not blame it on me later on. No, I blame it on you later. <laughs> that's a big mess if it flies out of the machine. Yeah, <laughs> you're always in the way, you know that? We got brand new belts after 20 years of usage. Ah. That's good enough. So the first thing I got to do is polish out this nick here. You sure you're yeah. not gonna make it any worse? No. I'm gonna stay away from the seal surface, of course. We'll have it on camera if you touch the seal surface. I find something like this should be reported in the ad. Yeah. And everybody who doesn't and later on argues around is uh, an a <laughs> It might cause an oil leak. So that's good. This here, oh, first nice gonna, and clean. Yeah, I'm gonna polish this with what? With sand. Oh my god! Oh, don't do that. Oh, power. Ah, uh, it looks like it can rip off a finger. It can rip off a finger, but I got ten of them. Okay. Watch your fingers. Yeah. Oh, oh god. This is good. Now we're gonna polish the mains. So, Pin bearing, rod bearing. Compound. How long we've had this paste in our <laughs> possession? Yeah. And we're gonna use this paste. And you're not gonna get it into the oil holes. And that's where we're gonna clean it back out. Oh, okay. Can see it here. If I get this rope caught. In the machine, I don't want to have it wrapped around my hands, okay? So so I'm at least that smart. Do you want me to hit the stop button in case um, of an emergency? No, I think this is going to work now. That looks like a dumb idea. So if something happens, like I now. can just let it go. Yeah, look at this. Ah, it's yeah. all shiny. Ah. Yeah. Yeah. But look at it now. It's quite shiny. Yeah. Yep. You said it's a cotton ball. Yeah, we bought it together. Well, that sounds kind of weird. We bought it together. <laughs> okay. okay. 
And how is that? And now we're gonna right do... in the way again. I'm not in the way. I still don't. That one. That one, yeah. But it's quite shiny. It's quite shiny. <laughs> Okay, I'm happy with this. Get out of my way. Yeah, you're in the way. Okay. Ah! Oh no. That was close. That was close <laughs> and we would have lost it. See, over here it slipped out. Oh man. Yeah. I'm gonna bring this in so it can't go and move further away. I needed to reach that one edge. Yeah. There. But now we're done with this edge. Yeah. Now I can run it against this corner. This way it can't slip away. It slipped away. Oh my god. <laughs> that, that would have been your oh my god, not mine. <laughs> if I have an oh my god, it's then a it's real really oh my bad. God. Okay. <laughs> now I show you how to do the others. Oh, oh, okay. You do it like this. Yeah. That's better than nothing. It's only to get the dirt off. Yeah. Yeah. The grind. I wonder what kind of a history that crankshaft has. So we has. can't use this rope anymore. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Last one. At least I complained long enough that he actually did them. And you got your workout for today. And that's why we bought the pipe cleaner for those holes. Yes, exactly. You got it. <laughs> so, not even Sarah and June would make that so clean. Oh, she definitely would. Let's carry that heavy thing. These are aluminum blocks, so they don't scratch the bearing surface. You sure yeah. about that? You're gonna put a layer of oil on. Okay, you guys see it? Okay, yeah, there we go. Ooh. And now watch the other side. Okay, see it? Yeah, let's hope so. No, it's good. Yeah. It's less than a hundredths run out. The print tolerance on this crankshaft is... Where did you put my magic print? Did you throw it away? Of course not. There is like a piece of oily oh, paper. piece of oily paper? <laughs> this is the crankshaft print. Okay, can you see this right here? No, you said you're going to look for it. Here is maximum run out 0 0.05 if running on A to B. So we got 0 0.09. Okay. This is the only copy I have, okay? Then don't treat it like a piece of trash paper. This is good. This crankshaft is in spec. The tolerance for, for the mains is... 69.98 is the nominal dimension, okay? Plus minus 0 0.01. And then there is a letter coding here stamped on the side of the crankshaft in microns. So A is lower tolerance limit, then B is plus 0 0.001 and going on. And that's stamped on here for each of the mains. So you can see what the crankshaft actually had for a nominal dimension when it came out of the plant. But for our purpose, all we have to do is check if we are within that tolerance. That's as good as we can measure it anyhow. Give it three clicks, like this. Yeah, it falls over it. And there is the zero, and we are about two and a half hundreds below. So we are on this one okay. Put some oil on here, and we don't get stuck. And I'm supposed to measure them in four positions, which of course I don't. It just ruins my nerves. And I'm also supposed to measure if they nice and even and flat. I also want to say two hundredths in the minus. So 69.98, which is good. It's supposed to be the nominal dimension. So this one is about, I want to say three hundredths 
below. So this one is a little bit worn out. It was also the one which needed the most polishing. A little tight, but it's also minus 300. And the pin bearing dimension, let me get my important print here, is 62.968 plus minus 0 0.01 and the same letter coding applies. It has four letters for the mains and six letters for the big end bearings. And if you have the letter coding A for the first pin, which is the one near the oil pump, it would be lower tolerance limit. If so it's pretty clear to everyone, I think, right? 62.968 on a couple of the big ends. How accurate is this thing? It's made in China. Yeah, you can do that for a while. Just have to make sure I'm getting all. Yeah, yeah. So, you think I got them all? No, I don't think so. Now this crankshaft is inspected as good as I can. <laughs> it's polished. It's clean. The dent is repaired what we had. Yeah, it's moving. Yeah, but it's not moving. You missed it. Yeah, because you said stop no, recording. Gotta, all I did is I stuck this in the hole and I bound it over this edge and it came right out. Yeah. We got basically undamaged cylinder bores here. But there is a little bit of a step, which I think is really minor. And I want to hone through these just lightly, just to break the glaze a little bit. And then we're going to run new piston rings. And they will run in much better if that glaze is gone and if there is some roughness back. So I'll see if I can get that done. You don't even know what we're doing here. So the majority of the scratches should have a 35 to 45 degree angle. So if I want to look at this, I think I got too little up and down motion. But basically all the wear marks are gone. So from the time, this is sufficient. So here we got some wear mark left, but that's not bad. We're going to leave it like this, but I got to get the scraping steeper. So lower RPM and more up and down, I would say. First, I got to give it a wipe to make sure there's no dirt inside left, which we may scratch into the cylinder wall. I decided to use a fine oil instead of the motor oil. it clearly shows that the disturbances are going away. You can also see the scratches here are also not 45 degrees. They're more like 30 degrees. So I think we're doing good from the angle. Yeah, it looks like a 45 degree angle. It, yeah, it looks better. Yeah. I'm getting the hang of it. So I don't want to go any deeper. This, this here, I can't even feel it. Okay, these discolorations and I definitely do not want to take any material out. I just want to get it roughed up so we can get the piston rings to run in. So WD-40, okay, I'm not using engine oil. You know, to me that definitely looks like another dumb idea. Well, you're doing boring stuff. What else am I supposed I'm to do? I'm doing boring stuff and you're making it even more boring. Yeah, but if you would just stop talking, we could do a time lapse. I think it's enough. Well, we have to check it first. It's perfect. I see it. Okay. So that was like 40 seconds of uh, honing. Yeah. 
I'm happy. As long as it didn't take off any so material, I'm happy. It's not taking off material. It's it's maybe, I mean, if it's a lot, it's a micron. It's only a micron is a lot for no, a discovery. Uh, is that dirt? Okay, before we get down into the details, we want to have the majority of the dirt on the outside gone and then we're going to flush the engine. You want to explain my setup? You better got, explain it. We got a canister here with thinner. This is oil-based thinner. Then we got our oil change pump over here with That's a battery. Yeah. And now I got here um, a line and we're going to put this into the main oil gallery. Powered by Fabian's battery. So and now I'm gonna turn the switch on and I don't I'm gonna take cover. Really? Focus on what I'm doing. Now I put it here. This is the hole which delivers oil up here. Yep. Okay, so I turn the pump back on. Why did I get just myself in a mess? Shoes. Okay, so this is not too bad. Oh, this uh, is like the thinner, so we're gonna have to... It's gonna get our floor clean. That's where we usually pour our concrete in. No, we don't. No. <laughs> What are you but we have about? more than one. We only one. use this for delicate cleaning jobs. <laughs> we're gonna do. We're gonna turn this thing around now. What? Oh, oh that way. Yeah, I don't know why you don't listen to me. I ruined my shirt. Mm. Okay. That. Now we got it this way around. around. Now I put it into the yep. galley here again. It smells like our our uh, shop is gonna explode anymore. <laughs> <laughs> so I would say that's not bad. We got I would all, say we are not done yet. Now we got all oil galleys flushed with Lacrosina and that's oil based, okay? Though so this is not the one which dissolves paint. So we're gonna be able to now dry this off and blow it out. It loosened all the dirt on the inside and it should be all clean. I'm gonna yeah. check that with my magnet. Okay, the stuff is expensive. Yeah. This was 25 euros. Oh, okay. Fabian's gonna give us a big paycheck. Okay, I don't know about that. <laughs> so we put this stuff away and we use this for the cylinder head. So I tell you, I'm pretty convinced that there will be no more dust. Well, we'll check it with a magnet. I think I become an addict now. <laughs> <laughs> oh. Well, at least your glasses are clean now. So let's check it before. Okay, here. No, you check it. You can't see that really. I don't see anything. Yeah, okay. So, now put it in the main oil galley. I call it one time galley and one time gallery. This way everybody is happy. Yeah, and please no comments. We know. <laughs> okay. I don't see it. I mean, good. Yeah. Well, it's they clean. are minute, no? It's clean. Okay. Yeah. Big pile of discovery parts. What are you looking for? I'm looking for the squirters. <laughs> Whatever that oh, is. <laughs> here are the squirters. So there must be three of these and three bolts. I don't know. First assembly step are the squirters. Yeah. The torque on these. Am I supposed to know that? 8 to 11 Newton meters? Uh, yeah. So. 
Okay, they go in here. Number Even one. Even before the bearings. Okay. <laughs> At least we are having fun. Okay. I mean, square does make a big mess. You know? Yeah, that's where the torques. Yep. Very nice of you. I wonder if we have enough Loctite for that entire engine. 8 to 11. Replaced. I don't understand that. We don't have a piston cooling jet, we got a squirter. The correct technical term is piston cooling jet. Okay. So squirters are in place. Step one of 395. Done. Oh my God. Okay, what's the next step? I don't know. Okay, the next step is that I have to lecture about the crankshaft again, unfortunately. <laughs> When we did our plast gauge inspection of the installed crankshaft in the engine block, we found that they all run between 0.035 and 0.05 millimeter of a gap using plastic gauge. So here is the plastic gauge. Not everybody is a engine head, okay? Plasti gauge is basically a calibrated um, clay strip, yep. like the Play-Doh clay, calibrated in size. And when you squish it, depending on the amount of squish, you can read the gap size using this gauge by holding it next to it. You're gonna take it out it's and you forgot forward. about it. You gotta pay attention. Oh my God. What? Well, actually, Wait. I'm no expert, but the lower tolerance limit is 0 0.22. So we got, oh, look at that. We got about 0 0.38 here. Look how even the spread is from that plastic gauge. That's what Fabian's gonna get. Okay. This oh, one it's is, better. This one is tighter. Yeah. It's, no, it's, if it's narrower, it's bad. So this one is between it's 0 0.05 that would be helpful okay that's the front main dear fabian your engine is here in spec so it is smaller than 0 0.038 but it's not 0 0.05 so i would say it's 0 0.045 yeah you made this thing. <laughs> oh damn fuck yeah i got it That one looks best. No, it's too uh, too loose. Well, it's not 0 0.038. It's somewhere around 0 0.05. So we got one which is clearly within spec. Yeah, that's the second one. Which are on the upper end of the known tolerance to mankind. <laughs> but that's as good as it's gonna get. This is a used original crankshaft and a reboard engine block with the cheapest bearing on the market. What are you gonna expect? I read a couple of posts from people in the UK and that's also what they targeted. They didn't target the lower end. So I think running it on the looser end is better. I think that's good enough of an explanation so Fabian doesn't get all paranoid. <laughs> but I wish there the, would be a Robbie's Guide. You know, Robbie's Guide, how to not screw up your engine. <laughs> that would be. Um, the other thing I wanted to say is I did not check when I did the plastic gauge test my end play. The end play we're going to check when it's in final position. According to the manual, the main bearing running clearance is 0 0.03 to 0 0.054. So we inch around on the upper tolerance limit. There are also numbers out there indicating 0 0.02 to 0 0.04, but I decided I'm gonna go by this value because it suits our tolerance much better and then everything is in tolerance. I want to lecture about the main bearings again. I think I already lectured hours on it, but I mean, this is, I think, really important to anyone, to anyone who wants to rebuild this engine. The first set of engine bearings we bought, we bought the expensive King bearings out of the United States. Those are the ones here. They are significantly more expensive than the Fi bearings out of the UK, FAI. So, these bearings 
unfortunately, did not fit. And I will show you why that is. The bore of the engine block, when you get a 2006 to 2009, is 74.98 millimeter. That's the line bore. And that's also the bore we recreated. Later models, like the three liter, have 75 and up. And when you look at the Phi catalog, you find that the bearing is made for 74.98. And that's what our housing bore measured on the original one, which was not destroyed. And when you look in the King bearing catalog, which is right here, and you take original standard bearings, they are made for a housing bore of 75.029 to 75.009. So one hundredths to three hundredths of a millimeter over 75, which is a total of five hundredths over the nominal. So these bearings can only be installed if you line hone the engine block, which is something I absolutely did not want to do. So these bearings developed too much crush during assembly and then they got basically unround and they were too tight. In my opinion, this is wrong in their catalog because they sell them for the 2.7 liter 2006 and 2007 engine as standard. They marked as standard. And then the Island 4x4 website in the UK who sells these bearings marks nothing on their webpage. So in my opinion, this is extremely misleading. You end up having wrong bearings or you need to uh, line hone your engine block. Very bad, be careful. When you use the cheap FAIs, they fit perfectly. We pre-installed them um, on two mains and they measured fine right there. Bear, see if you can capture that with the FAI. You can see how it's oriented right now. It's next to the oil hole, right in the thrust direction. And you can see we got about two and a half to three hundredths of a millimeter in the minus, yeah? So these are the bearings we've chosen. The Ford manual does show the main bearing housing diameter to be 75.00 to 75.02. That's now what King Engine Bearing is gonna tell you. That the Ford engine is built like this and that their bearings are correct. So good luck having a discussion with them or raising the fire box. They are the good guys. We're gonna insert the main bearings into the engine block. Now that already starts here that some people say you have to insert them dry. I can tell you I do not assemble anything dry, never, because I think they need to slip into the final position and they need some lubrication there. Okay, so I had these engine bearings installed before to gauge them, that's where those light scratches are from, and when I had them installed before I marked their position so I know exactly how I had them in when I did my plastic gauge check, okay, and when I did my my board check. So now I put them in here and um, I think Vera showed this before that these holes on the Phi bearings are way smaller. They have the original size from the original. They have bearings. the original size and which I know everybody complains about this engine but I feel more comfortable not making a major change to these engines. Yeah. Maybe somebody sends us an email saying oh I'm running the King bearings and I got 450,000 kilometers on it, but I kind of doubt it. There, there, is, a, there is a video um, on YouTube where somebody gauged the thickness of a Sharpie marker, so I'm not going to remove them. Yeah. <laughs> so, this is it. Now, on the last one, okay, I also marked it. That's the thrust bearing, yeah? This thrust bearing. It still sounds like it belongs to a rocket engine. <laughs> I'm not using the 5W30 engine oil to oil these up. This is not going to work. I'm going to use a gear oil and I had a lot of questions lately what gear oil we use in the transfer case. So I thought I used the transfer case gear oil and I can show you guys. This is what we use in our transfer case. SAE 75W80, the GL3 Plus from Liqui Moly. We use a lot of their products. Not sponsored. Of course not. Now when you get this on it's important that you don't use any kind of brush or so on which loses later on um, 
you know, any kind of uh, yes. hairs. So I got me here, I think you're a toothbrush here. <laughs> exactly. Oh shit, it is mine. <laughs> yeah. yeah, so you brush this in here. Yeah. And you see this oil is just much thicker and it will stay. And Vera's toothbrush is, is really distributing this really well. I put it back when we're done. <laughs> and now we can almost drop the crankshaft in. I got it polished, I got it cleaned, I can't lecture enough about it. This is the first <laughs> crankshaft we're really installing, other than the plastic gauge test we already did. Oh. What Land Rover says, which I find really, really weird, actually Ford says, when you got this crankshaft installed, you're not supposed to turn it during the assembly procedure. I read that too. Yeah, that's, that's in the manual. You're putting it in, you're lubricating it, you get the end cap lined up, and when you're all done, you rotate it and you measure the rotate torque. That's how they want it. And are we going to do it like that? Um, Please say yes. Yeah, probably. Okay, good. So, so now we lubricate the top side here. Yeah. Okay, make sure I get it here on the thrust bearing face too. Yeah, that's where the toothbrush comes in really handy. Yeah. So we're gonna lubricate the bolt threads here with Vera's toothbrush. This is really important. So now we're gonna lubricate the main bearings here. Now here, I had to take one thrust face out. The phi bearing actually came with two thrust faces and it's on the block facing the outside. See here are two thrust faces and there's only one. Oh. This is the one I removed from the phi bearing. Yeah. I put some oil here on the bosses too, right here. I didn't know that's called bosses. Yeah. Let's put another layer on because Vera was at the bathroom wasting time. Oh my God. So this is number two. And the arrow is facing forward into the forward side of the engine. So I put these in. Now the two inner ones are the ones we reworked and they fit loosely. Okay, so I have to watch the tightening order on those by far the most. Now this is the number four. And as we said, this one got to face the front. And the thrust face is in the right way. And these require a little bit of tapping. Okay, now I got it too far forward. I have to push it over a little. Yeah, number one, facing forward, nicely centered. This is important. And we put it in. Very nice. Same thing we did during the plastic gauge test. Last one, this one is loose again. That's number three because it got remachined and everything. And it is facing forward. Almost put it in. <laughs> and there is a big discussion on the internet if you use now engine oil on the bolt heads or if you use um, special grease. Here on the side. I'm a little bit worried we're going to develop an oil leak because we reseeded these two mains in our line boring video. You can see that and they sit now further down. Fabian's going to have to wipe that oil off once in a while. Yeah. Yeah. And we're going to put something here on the bolt heads like they said. These are the most expensive bolts ever imported into Germany. 406 US dollars by the time everything was paid. Because my good friend Rob thought he has to FedEx them over here, you know, basically overnight, and the shipping was two hundred and thirty dollars, mm -hmm. and then I paid fifteen dollars of custom clearance, and I paid the twenty percent duty, I paid the local shipping in the U.S., and I paid the local taxes in the U.S. So. That didn't really work out to get those bolts cheap. Yeah. But now we're going to talk about the bolt tightening order. And we're going to make a science project out of this, of course. Otherwise, this wouldn't be a lot of time over here. If you want to see this the easy way, go watch Toyota videos. The first thing is you need to do your research. 
to find out what's the good information on the internet and what is the bad information on the internet. The one which is most obviously used and most often used is the tightening procedure out of the Citroen manual, which appears to be somewhat reasonable. And they are the only ones who give a unit of deca newton meters. So this is 60 newton meters plus minus 6 newton meters. So they go 60, 145 and then 90 degrees to put them into yield. When you look at the manual from Outback Engineering, you find that one on the internet. And they also go with the 60 newton meters and then 145 newton meters and then they angle tighten 90 degrees. When you look in the manual from Ford, they first of all say a lot more how you have to oil the bolts. They also explain at what point to seat the crankshaft thrust bearing. So this manual is way more detailed. So the Ford manual actually specifies a different tightening procedure. They go in four stages, but what's here mainly different is they snug them up at 60 newton meter and then they already go into yield by taking them 70 degrees further up to 110 degrees further. So we're going to go with this tightening torque here from Outback Engineering. We're going to go, once we have the 60, we go to 145 and then we take them into yield. But we're going to cut this yield angle short. So we're not going to overdo the 90. We're going to we're gonna go maybe like 75 to 80. During the line boring operation and during my plastic gauge test, I did not have the Ford manual and that's why I can't follow it now suddenly. Otherwise I have different tightening torques as we had during line boring and as during plastic gauge testing. And what I did is I wrote the tightening order right onto the engine block and I started wrong right with the first one. <sighs> I'm gonna give them already a good torque on the side. This way I pull them in the same position as I had them during the line boring operation. So I'm gonna tighten these here already to 30 newton meters now. This pulls the bearing cap over. The other side bolts, we can leave them in the first go around loose because they stuck tight. We gotta move the crankshaft over. And we do this. Oh my God. We do this by pushing it with a pry bar. I got something mounted on the end of the crankshaft here so I don't destroy it. And now I gotta push the crankshaft over really hard. And this seats the bearing faces. Yeah, so there is float. So now you have to put it back. Yeah, I gotta, I gotta push it back now. Okay, and I screwed it up again. Oh man. Sixteen, and what we're gonna do now is tighten the sides. Okay, so sixty newton meters. We want to violate the rules. We're gonna turn the crankshaft down. Don't do that. No, you're not supposed to do that. <laughs> because it says it in the manual. Yes, because it says in the manual. <laughs> but look, it rotates really nice and easy. I couldn't resist. 145, okay. Okay, now we gotta take the bolts into yield. This is now set to 150. 45 degrees would be about here. This would be the absolute maximum. That's good enough for me. So I don't have 150. That's by far tight enough. So we check in crankshaft end play, you gotta go at the indicator here. Okay, this is one end. We'll put this one to zero. Oh my god. And now the other end. I'm pushing on this one. So we got 0 0.3 
millimeter end play. Oh, yeah. is that a lot? We look in the manual. Oh my god. So there's the crankshaft end float, which is a maximum of 0 0.31, and we got 0 0.3. That? Yeah, it is. So here's the crankshaft end float. In the haste manual. 0 0.21 to 0 0.43. So we are definitely in yeah. that look spec. Here. Look over here. The Land Rover manual from the TDV6 diesel engine also says 0 0.21 to 0 0.43. And float. Still good. We're not going to open up those bearings again. No. Yeah. Are you nuts? This is exactly within specification and it's a used crankshaft. So the last step is that we have to take the side bolts into yield. And how we do that? We got to go 47 degrees plus minus 20 degrees. You must have looked at that number a lot according to those oil yeah, states. Yeah, I'm always pointing at <laughs> it. Like this. Done. And this oil off I got on here earlier. What I'm really happy with is how the crankshaft feels when I turn it. Don't I can turn it? What the hell? What the hell? I can how do you turn the engine? Are you kidding me? I can't turn that stupid crankshaft. Oh now <laughs> Oh my god. Yeah? Uh yeah, it's really complicated in my opinion to assemble such an engine and finding all the information correctly and do it right. The crankshaft is turning, the end play is correct, the plastic gauge worked, the crankshaft is nicely polished. So I hope everything is correct. What do we call this video now? How not to screw up an engine rebuild. And you stop giving me a hard time about my torque wrench? I can't even read the display anymore. That that torque wrench. Oh, it's a Ghidorah. Yes, it's yeah, an expensive but, torque wrench. But, but it's broken and it's not reliable. It's know? reliable. It just felt weird. Okay, I'm not going to do any more videos or any more repairs with that torque wrench. Okay, good. So, then we'll have to buy. <laughs> I'm a showstopper if I don't get a new torque wrench. We have to buy a new one. Let's hope the piston rings come in so we can put the pistons in.